Hello everybody, it's me, Glenda, with Shaking Hands Art and with Freelance and Friends. And I just have been so encouraged by all of your comments and all the new subscribers. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Because we have a lot of fun in here. I've got some more requests to be painted. And then I'll be open for even more requests. <laughs> but Joe and I will do a, a porch or table chat sometime this week. Or probably tomorrow. I don't know. And then I'll get back to the paintings. I think I've got a, a dolphin, some starfish, and a turtle. Because the one turtle I did for her, I did kind of weird, so I'm going to do another one. Plus, we did, a, did one with a whole bunch of sea creatures. You can go back and see. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to finish a peacock. And I asked for a challenge, and this gal knows me, Linda Wilson. She's been with us for a long time, and she knows me when I asked for a challenge. And she gave me a challenge. But look, it's not, it's turning out pretty good. So, I've been doing, I'm going to start up here now. I made way too many lines, so I'm not going by lines so much. I'm going more by trying to keep them somewhat distant. And they do call these eyes. I was thinking, am I right in doing that? But when I was looking it up, they do call these little things here eyes. So I did have that part right. <laughs> I had one part right. Now, they did say that the feathers are like 15 feet long. Or up to that. That's long. They say they're the longest of any colored bird. Pardon if it looks like I'm rushing through this. I've got this really sped up because... Otherwise, it was going to be close to an hour. And I wanted you to see this come together. But the, what I wanted to speak to you about, I've been doing some research. <laughs> and I've talked to you about, you know, all the different things, where the peacock originated from, all that stuff. But I hadn't really, other than the colors and how beautiful they were, haven't really spoken of the meaning of these colors in different cultures. Now, they, it depends on where you come from, and it depends on what you choose to believe. I believe these birds are gorgeous, and I believe that I would love to decorate with them, with their colors, there are many different cultures that believe, okay, in India, let's start there. In India, one of the, one of the beliefs is that if you find a peacock feather, that it is good luck, that you are going to have fortune, especially if it is in your path, if you find it in the path. So... And it's just very interesting, all of the different meanings that are given to this feather. So, as I said, in, it, good luck in some cultures. And some, even, well, even in Christianity, which I had no, I'm a Christian, and I had no knowledge of this. But it is sometimes a symbol, not <laughs> not anything holy, but a symbol of rebirth and hope. And I guess we all like to put, 
you know, stamps on things, but it's not something that, as a Christian, that we would worship, but using it as a way to demonstrate rebirth and hope, or at least hope. The reason for that was because, and I don't know where that came from originally, but it came about because it is thought because the peacock feathers keep their color even after the peacock dies. Well, that's pretty, you know, it's pretty apparent since, you know, we save peacock feathers and they don't lose their color. Decorating, <laughs> they are huge in decorating. Just using the whole image of the peacock throughout your decorating is considered to be a very, it's a very high form of decorating according to what I've read. That's probably not the right form, I just don't know. <laughs> uh, protection in some in some places especially Greece um, in their mythology they have considered it to be a form of protection and healing in Buddhism Buddhism looks for wisdom in a lot of different things Buddhism is always looking for that positive and so they consider it to be used for wisdom or a sign of wisdom. I don't know. Some cultures use it as a symbol of wealth. I don't. Or that they, uh, that they can bring prosperity. Well, I suppose if you're going to sell enough peacock feathers at a high enough price, yeah, they'd bring you some prosperity, that's for sure. They're, they are a gorgeous, gorgeous bird. I told you about my grandparents having peacocks when we were growing up. And, um, yeah, they're pretty noisy. But the length of the feathers, the colors of the feathers, it's just insane. It's insanely beautiful. I mean, that, I don't know, that's probably not, a good way to describe it, but it in okay in the United States we have some things that we say that don't mean much error anywhere else. When we say insanely beautiful, it's like it's over the top. It's in it's very, very, very beautiful. <laughs> However many varies we can put to it. So it it doesn't mean that anything is actually insane as it would be described in our <laughs> in our dictionary they they do symbolize elegance and beauty and in some places immortality and I don't know if it's because the impression that they give of be, because they are such a beautiful um, and long Feather, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of cultures with a lot of beliefs around these things that I don't understand because I'm not from there. So I don't want to insult anybody. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to inform of different um, aspects that or different uh, symbolizations that cultures and people have put on the peacock. Now, they have been introduced, they were introduced, uh, I don't know, 3,000 years or so ago into Egypt, probably much more than that, but around 3,000 years ago, they were introduced to Egypt and that area, and things just spread. They were brought over to the United States. And it's the way a lot of animals spread all over the world. They just, and, um, you know, after, there's certain ones, though, that have to be 
very careful because they are delicately, they need, I don't know how to explain that. A lot of exotic, what we call exotic animals here in America because we don't have, they are not nat natural here. And they don't take to our climate quite as easily as some. But there, you have to have a special permit in order to have one that is not in captivity. And a lot of them, it's just plain not going to happen. And it's, there's some that it's unfortunate because they're, there's dangerous species that get brought up here. People bring them in as pets. And when they get too big, they toss them out right now down in the Florida. They're having problems with pythons. Now, you're never going to have that problem with peacocks. You can enjoy them and just enjoy the beauty. I, I think the best part of a peacock is enjoying what enjoying the beauty that it brings into our lives and either we like to copy it as much as we can I didn't do a perfect job I can't but God certainly did thank you for listening and we'll see you tomorrow I am calling it. <laughs> that is it. That is the end. It peacock season, but only for photographs and paintings. <laughs> I don't think he turned out looking bad at all. We got a couple of places that I hope nobody picks out, but. I think I did okay. You're a good looking bird, you are, you are. Let's name this guy, just for fun. So what would you like to name him? Glenda Wilson, he's your challenge. You gotta name him. <laughs> I love all of you, and we will be doing an, either a swing, porch swing chat, or a table chat tomorrow, and then I will be doing the dolphin, the starfish, and a repeat of the turtle by itself. Except I'm going to do them on small canvas and give them their own individual center of the story <laughs> anyway smile and wave there's yours take care of yourself good night a heart speed to the city streets we begin to feel the fire